a beautiful waitress, naked in the hotel room of two big names in the entertainment industry. Lanny and Vince are a pair of famous comedy partners. Their careers are going strong. After the end of a fundraising event for polio children, Lanny and Vince found the strange body of a naked woman in the hotel room where they were staying. So far, the two people's acting career has occurred. Fifteen years later, the young beautiful news reporter, Karen, received an interview given by the newspaper. The newspaper is ready to publish a book about the interview Vince, and Vince will be paid one million. The newspaper planned to put some excerpts of the interview in the magazine that was released. In the first look, the newspaper wants to put some hard news, such as why Vince and Lanny were separated, and the dead waitress named Maureen. What had happened to her? But no one has ever been able to get Lanny to talk about the girl's death. Karen is actually the same child who appeared at a charity event by the two 15 years ago. And now grown up, she does not want to believe that the case is related to Lanny and Vince. In order to work on the book, Karen wanted to see Lanny and contacted him. But Lanny did not want to see Karen, but only commissioned a book manuscript to show Karen. The book manuscript recounts that Lanny first met Maureen, a waitress, during that charity event where the beautiful Maureen served meals to the guest room, was in as a room service attendant at the Versailles Hotel in New Jersey. Maureen tells Lanny that she is an editor at school and uses her summer to work part-time as a waitress. She wanted to write an article about Lanny for a campus publication. Lanny knows he will definitely see Maureen again. Lanny also mentions how Lanny was called out for being too old at the club, and Vince went behind Lanny's back and gave the cursor a hard time. For Vince and Lanny, there is nothing the two can't do for each other. After reading the book manuscript, Karen then knew that Lanny himself also wrote an autobiography, as a final note on Vince and his career together, and did not want Karen's book to continue to write. An explicit appointment with Lanny did not work, Karen had to let the publisher arrange first class. She was prepared to create a chance encounter with Lanny on the plane. For this reason, Karen also borrowed the identity of her good friend Bonnie, acquaintance with Lanny accompanied by his valet too. Soon, Lanny was attracted by Karen's beauty. After getting off the plane has been sent him to the residence before reluctant to leave. Karen saw off her hero, who had helped her. As recounted in Lanny's book, Lanny and Vince arrived in New York by plane after the show and from attending the press conference back to the hotel. The two were watched by police and reporters throughout. There was no time to commit the crime in between. Karen spoke to a close friend that night, who said she received excerpts from Lanny's autobiography for Karen. In the second one, she tells how the pair, Lanny and Vince, were separated, and claims that Vince and himself have a history of drug use. They were threatened by the owner of the Sun Palace Hotel to perform in the hotel nightclub for weeks on end from the charity event and despite the fact that there would be no time to rest. Lanny and Vince succumbed to the mob boss after confirming that the two loved lobster. He claimed that he would leave the two a sweet and call girl, and would even send a pass for lobster and crab. The night before the charity event, Lanny and Vince literally saw several cases of seafood in their hotel room with a note that they would be sent to a suite at the Sun Palace Hotel. The seafood was in huge crates holding ice cubes. Lanny called the waitress, Maureen, to bring the food. Lanny spent a fragrant and wonderful night with Vince and Maureen and the other girls. Karen sensed that this was Lanny's own account and that the truth might be something else. Early the next morning, Karen woke up to an invitation call from Lanny. By the evening, Karen and Lanny have dinner and Karen tentatively asks Lanny if he has plans for a book. Lanny says that the autobiography will be published after his death. During the meal, Karen found Lanny surprisingly hated lobster, which made Karen understand Lanny more. He could not help but remember the scene 15 years ago when he was donated in a charity event. Lanny like a hero in her heart deeply affected Karen, decided to write the book about Lanny in her own way after the meal, respectively Karen did not choose to leave directly, but walked towards Lanny. After a sweet kiss, the two went back to the hotel to spend a good night, but in the morning, Karen found Lenny left without saying goodbye, not even a note, and her own clothes are also unknown who has prepared them. To learn more about the case, Karen comes to visit the mother of the waitress, Maureen. The mother recalls the scene when Maureen planted trees with her father when she was young. The story of her daughter's suicide became a lingering pain for the whole family, and her father chose to commit suicide a few years ago. In this home full of holes, people have gone, but the trees are still there, leaving this poor mother, strong and miserable living. Then, Karen visited the sheriff who was in charge of the Maureen case. The sheriff insisted that Maureen's was tired of drinking and taking drugs. But Karen learned that the hotel staff knew that Maureen had never been out on the flight back after entering that suite three days earlier. Karen remembered that Lanny, in his book manuscript, had claimed to love lobster. But in the restaurant, Lanny hated lobster extremely. 
This means that not everything Lenny said in his book manuscript was true. Combined with the sheriff's statement that the dead Maureen had some slight scratches on her body, Karen associated that the scratches were probably left by the lobster. All kinds of clues are revealing that Maureen is likely to be murdered. The more Karen thought about it, the more frightened. She could not accept this hypothesis. With all the questions, Karen came to Vince's house to do an interview. Karen made it clear to Vince that she was the polio-stricken child who had received a donation that year. In the supermarket, Karen ran into Reuben who came shopping together. Reuben not only remembered the first encounter with Karen, but also Lanny was very sorry for Karen's untimely departure. Reuben took the opportunity to suggest that Lanny was a negative man. He felt that staying away from Lanny was the best choice for Karen. After going round and round interviewing, Karen picked out to Vince that she wanted to know about Maureen. Karen comes to Vince's house for another interview as promised, and Vince surprises Karen by inviting Lanny to his home as well, which makes Karen panic. If the three of them meet, Karen's cover-up with Lanny will be completely blown. She tries to use his friend's phone call to make up an excuse to escape from Vince. But unfortunately, just as Karen walked out of Vince's house, she met Lanny. And now Karen's fake identity was revealed. Karen had to try her best to salvage the situation by explaining to Lanny and asking him back why he left himself at the hotel and left alone. Not even a note. Lanny argues that he was woken up by Reuben that day and left a note before catching a plane to leave. But the note is strangely missing. Karen also explained to Vince that she had a chance encounter with Lanny's experience, and Vince keenly guessed that Karen had a relationship with Lanny, and the originally planned meeting of the three fell apart. Lanny tells Karen that Vince is not always just for himself. Maureen's death is the most painful thing in Vince's life. Before leaving, he cautioned Karen not to dig into the matter now. Although Lanny and Vince have a gap, but strangely enough, the two still do not lose trust between them. Karen directly requests to Vince to finish the interview, and Vince tells her to come back in the evening. By the end of the night, during dinner between Vince and Karen, Vince tablets Karen with LSD, and Karen subsequently becomes unconscious. At Vince's instigation, a young girl had sex with Karen, all of which was recorded by Vince. On the second day, when Karen woke up, Vince used the photos of Karen having fun with the girl. To blackmail, Karen was asked to continue to complete that book, but not to involve any time about Maureen. Karen was also asked to convince the publisher that he could not find any doubts or loopholes in Maureen's world. That way, Karen could finish her best-selling book and Vince could get his $1 million payoff. But what Vince did not anticipate was that Karen was not afraid of the threat of racy photos, and Vince's blackmail would not change her role in knowing the truth at all. Karen turned on the recorder and asked Vince whose idea it was to put Maureen's body in a box with seafood and ice and ship it to a hotel room in New Jersey. Vince froze at the questioning, not realizing that Karen had found out about his actions back then. Vince became hysterical, rushed forward and ripped up the tape and tried to strangle Karen. But in the nick of time, Vince stopped his hands and hugged Karen tightly. Karen pushed Vince away and questioned him if that was how he had murdered Maureen. Vince didn't answer, but told Karen to ask Lanny. A physically and emotionally exhausted Vince returns to the hotel room where the murder took place 15 years ago, to the place where his fate took a turn for the worse. He was dressed in formal attire, with a twinge of resentment toward Lanny. And then after drinking an overdose of alcohol and sleeping pills, Vince drowned in this tub full of ice that tragically ended his life. In the face of the truth is revealed, the powerless Vince cannot do anything but die. After Vince's death, Karen received the third chapter of Lanny's memoir, which tells the story of the night of the murder 15 years ago. In the hotel room, Maureen completed an interview with Lanny and Vince in her capacity as editor of the University magazine. During the interview, Maureen used a tape recorder. What is not known is that after the interview, Lanny has the heart of Maureen did not turn off the recording. Lanny and Vince asked Maureen to stay overnight. In order to get into the state, all three people took sleeping pills. That night, Maureen accidentally discovered the passion between Vince and Lanny. Although for a long time, Lanny is opposed and restrained, but this time the impulsive act caught by Maureen. Maureen took advantage of the opportunity to blackmail Lanny. Lanny thought to pay and the problem will be solved. Who knows that the ambition of the Maureen is not limited to this, it is facing graduation from college. She hopes to use this to know the burst of information to become a journalist, so that she can get more money. Maureen due to sleeping pills take effect and flow in the room. Lanny and Vince also sleep. The morning of the second day, Lanny wakes up only to find Maureen already dead. The autopsy showed that she had used drugs and drank alcohol, but Lanny knew that this was not enough to be fatal. Since Lanny finds that all three doors in the dead Maureen's temporary room were locked from the inside, Lanny thinks that only Vince could have killed Maureen. Lanny tries to forgive Vince, 
but a rift between the two is inevitable. At the charity event show afterwards, Lanny finds that Vince is unable to focus on the show, and any hint of a smile that distracts Vince will ruin his career. Lanny knew their partnership was over, reading over the third chapter of the book. Karen came to see Lanny in his office and asked to see him. Lanny was devastated by Vince's death. Since Karen did not attend Vince's funeral, Lanny is angry at Karen's callousness, believing that she pushed Vince to his death. Karen did not mention a word about Vince's death. She came this time, hoping to add some information from Lanny here. The interview with Vince has been completed. Karen through the details of the interview with Vince with Lanny's book manuscript inferred that Lanny in fact, also loved words. Lanny cannot argue. Karen took out the book manuscript. Lanny was amazed that Karen had this. Karen said it was couriered to her house. Apparently, someone had sent this book manuscript to Karen secretly. Karen was thrown out of Lanny's office. Reuben has been waiting for her for a long time. Karen tells Reuben the secret of the Maureen Dark weapon it issued, but Reuben argues that she has not found the murderer. Reuben reveals that he has the tape used by Maureen on the night of the murder, and hopes to sell the tape to Karen. The reward that Reuben hopes for turns out to be one million as well. It dawned on Karen that the previous note when Lanny left himself must be Reuben, Reuben took the Lanny's book manuscript the reason why Karen received. Together, they can form the evidence to support each other. Reuben had discovered Karen's true identity from her luggage when he took away the note that day. Karen was covering the case of Maureen's death, and this was the very tool that Reuben wanted to use to control Lanny and Vince. That's why Reuben wanted Karen to give up contacting Lanny. Karen determined that Reuben was in the room the night of the murder based on all the clues at hand. The reason why Lanny thinks the room three doors are locked inside is because Reuben before entering the room to wake up Vince relocked the door. That night Reuben hiding in the closet. When Lanny, Vince and Maureen, three people are asleep, Reuben appeared to smother Maureen, and then from the Vince house to pull away, which led to Vince tainted each other. But because each of the two love each other, so that they keep it a secret. Although this protects Lanny and Vince's secret from outsiders, but this matter has always tormented these two people. Karen decided that what Reuben did was for future retirement plans. Reuben created a secret room murder case and got away with it himself, waiting for the right moment to blackmail Vince for one million, which caused Vince to protect Lanny. Willing to use one million reward to the newspaper in exchange for the right to distribute the autobiography book. And then Reuben sent the book manuscript to Karen secretly and now took the tape in an attempt to get one million from Karen here. Karen discovers Reuben's plot to discover the real killer of Maureen and the truth of the case that has been hidden for 15 years. Reuben was shocked by Karen's reasoning, and he had to leave in silence when he saw that the conspiracy was foiled. Instead of announcing the truth, Karen comes to Maureen's house again. She tells Maureen's mother that Maureen was killed because she knew some of Vince's secrets. Maureen's mother wanted Vince's murder of Maureen to be made public. Karen explained with difficulty that an innocent person was involved in this case, but Karen promised Maureen's mother that she would write the truth about the case. She needs to wait until this innocent person is dead to when the truth will not hurt the person anymore, and this innocent person is Maureen's mother. Karen wanted to protect her from greater harm, so Karen could not tell her. Maureen's mother nodded silently and accepted Karen's suggestion. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. What movie do you want next? Just comment below. Have a nice day.